Hello, and welcome to 10 Very Big Books, a Malazan read-through podcast. My name is Peter Bond, and with me today is my producer, AJ Faleri. Hello. Sorry, that it was it felt a little brief, felt a little transactional. You missed half of the words you say. Um, no, it's good. <laughs> my friend and closest confidant, India Jones. Hello. How's your dinner going, Inge? Oh, it's it's going well. It's um, a really nice little Dominican restaurant, uh, so I'm pleased. Nice. Nice. Um, and last is uh, Josh Baker. Um, how are you, buddy? Uh, pretty good. Made some stir fry from dinner, you know. Feeling feeling solid. Um, nice. All right. So uh, up top today, we did want to just say a few things. This week's reading contains torture and sexual violence, and we're going to discuss that at length on the show. So if you're not interested, no worries. Thanks for listening. And um, we're just going to try and create an honest and open and respectful space. And we ask you to bring the same spirit to this conversation. So today we're going to talk about chapter 15 um, of Dust of Dreams and share our experience reading it and reacting uh, to this hobbling. Um, And then we'll talk about chapter 16 and then move through the credits. Um, And after the credits actually roll, we are going to read and respond to... um, some writing by Bill Capaceri, Amanda Rudder, and Steven Erickson from the Tor Reread post uh, of Dust of Dreams. And the link to that post uh, can be found in the notes of this show. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's what we're doing here today. Um, and uh, Happy New Year, everybody. Happy New Year. I mean, at this point, uh, I think this will be the second episode of 2023, but... Uh, AJ, it's actually 2023. Just, just want to quick get that your way now what is that joke i'm not even mean? yeah i'm <laughs> i'm not gonna say that actually peter that's pretty hack uh actually <laughs> oh, wow um aj looking at me dead in the eyes again <laughs> um 2023 to me um good question josh <laughs> it just means it's just a bit of a twin twine you know what i mean you just put TW in front of words uh, whenever you feel like it. Okay. You said fun I've, time. I typed this in just to see if I've missed something. <laughs> it's fucking nothing. It's okay. just we're only watching 500 Days of Summer. We're only listening to a, that band that Zoe Deschanel's in. That's true. <laughs> Zoe's coming back, baby. It's a twee new year. What do you mean, come, what do you mean coming back? She never left. All right. Twee is Damn. hysterical. Not my, not my heart. Um, Josh, I hate to break it to you. Zoe's left the building. OK, she can come Stop. back in. She's a she's fan. married to a property she's brother. Very much she to is. A property brother. She's is married she really? to a property brother. She's a thruple with a property brother. She's a thruple. Okay. Now, okay. Now, okay. That's okay. Right in India. Listen, go, 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 go. Good for her. Good. Oh Nail land and two property brothers. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> for the for the price of one. Um. Hmm. Did <laughs> do they have twee property children? We ought to go. What the fuck children. does that even mean? I still don't know what twee. Oh, I see. I've never seen this word in my life. Um, Josh, you want to read us the definition of the word tweet? Yeah, for everyone else like me. It's first off, it's fucking British. So I did not know that. Despite the fact that Josh Josh is familiar with the UK. Uh, Excessively (laughs) or affectedly quaint, pretty or sentimental. Listen, sounds like there's worse things to be, to be honest. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. The second picture when you Google tweet, actually the first and second picture is Zoe Deschanel. So there you go. Yeah, she's like the peak uh, twee person, I think. Yeah. It's interesting that the word is is British. I guess that makes kind of some sense, because when it came around in the early aughts, like pre 2010, I do not remember hearing this word until right this moment, guys. So sure. Well, I'm just saying that British culture was kind of in the zeitgeist in some ways. uh, Agree. In certain circles. So a tweet was when like Tumblr. (laughs) Um, Yeah. Interesting. Never in the circles I've traveled, AJ. Okay. sure. Um. Sorry, you're not cultured is all I can say. Wow. Wow. Facts. Who lived in a different country for two and a half years? Uh, I don't think it was you, Pete. <laughs> well, I would never live in the UK, okay? Unless they invited me. In that case, maybe. Okay? <laughs> Perfect. But it would have to be straight. <laughs> it have to be straight? It have to be straight. <laughs> it's just, it That's a really new take I, for we Pete. Really gave you, we really gave you space to finish the sentence, and you didn't. Yeah. I was going to say straight from the queen, but I don't know if you've heard <laughs> she's passed. Yeah. So we're several months um, late on that one. Twees. Um, that's why I stopped dead in my tracks. <laughs> your twa- your twax. My yeah. twax. That's actually done. Twab Twitter to my twax. No, we're d- okay, I'm going to leave. <laughs> actually, Maybe we should get into the, the book. <laughs> Chapter 15. 
ritual reflects on the Talani Mass and the ritual of Talan. Ahead of him in his journey is Tak, who tells him that he cannot go further. They speak about humanity and Hood's gate. Tak must turn Tool away, telling him to find his children. After Tool leaves, Tak weeps at the pain of turning away his friend. He curses Olar Ethel for compelling him to do it. Torrent wakes from watching Tak and speaks to Olar Ethel as well. They speak about what Tak can hear and what Tog and Fandere want with him. They too speak of the Imas. Olar Ethel speaks about who she is and what she has done. Torrent pledges he will do as she asks. Setok sees Caffel dreaming. He is repeating, something terrible is about to happen. They speak of destruction and wolves. They agree they must flee. Sagtrok reflects on the enemy and annihilation. Gunthmok thinks of the stream of memories that the matron have access to. Powerful, but dangerous. Scepter Urkulis looks at the battlefield of the Bargast and Akrani, considering what could have caused this mass destruction and deciding sorcery. Meryl Ebb considers waging further war against the Akrani, and Bacal listens. Understanding maybe what Tool would have thought, thinking maybe Tool should have just killed them all. Sakara the Vile leads the Gadra and reflects on the choices ahead of her. Hedon's twins, Stabby and Story, are playing with Absikir, her son. The news of Tool's death is brought to the camp. Caffel and Sedak run with the wolves to the Warren, but Sedak knows he will not arrive in town. Hetan is hobbled. The children are chased. Caffel is getting closer. The children make a stand, turning on their would-be killer. But at the last moment, Tak strikes them down with arrows. The children embrace him. Setak awakes with the wolves in a ring of stones as Caffel reaches the Bargas camp. Meryl Ebb has Sakara's allies killed. She asks her husband to kill Meryl Ebb, but it's too late. Ebb's men kill Sakara's husband, but she bargains with them, saying she can lead them to Pakal. Bacall reflects on the Bargas pursuing this violence in the face of an enemy approaching them. He is then attacked, and then Kaffel arrives to help him. They will try to save Hetan, but they will have to wait to gather allies. Tak leads the children away. Far away from the battlefield, Tool picks up a flint sword and heads out to kill. All right, so before we get to the the heavy stuff, um, let's discuss... Uh, Some heavy stuff. Yeah, but uh, marginally... <laughs> the lighter stuff. The lighter stuff. So there's the chapter opens with a really heavy scene, a heartbreaking scene between Tool and Tak. Friends reunited, but uh, Tak is standing in Tool's way... AJ, how did it feel to see these friends in this position? And um, afterwards, you, of course, see Tox's point of view and this the actual conflict is told from Tool's point of view. Yeah, um, I mean, it was nice to see them together again. Uh, really sad that they're both dead, but not, you know, um, 
but I guess cool that they could be together again in death. I don't know. Um, no, it was just, it was nice. I like, it was like nice vibes just seeing two bros hanging out again. Um, but I was upset when they were fighting. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, that's, that's kind of it. I don't really have any, any, any like deeper thoughts there. It was just like, I was bummed and confused because I didn't know why talk was doing that and wasn't expecting to immediately find out like what was happening. I had just assumed that would be a thing that would be like, like later in the book, talk would be like, yeah, somebody told me to do this. But no, it's like he was 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 Olar Athiel like threatening his life, right? Like she was going to kill him or was she just like controlling him? What was exactly the situation there? Do we know? Because it, it talks about like feeling her cold hand on his neck or something. But I don't know if that's like literal or if like it seemed like she had some control over him. But I was also a little confused on that because I thought he yeah. was only under Hood's thing. So, yeah. But I guess the specifics don't super matter. Mm-hmm. We just know that she was doing something, uh, making him turn back. But I'm curious why, like, because they don't they don't say specifically why they had uh, why they had him turn Tool away, right? It's just like he can't come. Oh well, because she's using him to kill all the Bargast. It seems. Oh okay. Beca- right. Oh, because he's the he's the first. We, well, it, it's not until the next chapter that we find out, but it's because he was the the first sword of the Talani Mass, and this lady's mm. like the ultimate bone caster of the Talani yeah. Mass, and she wants them to fucking kill humanity. Got it. Oh, Thank you, yeah. Josh. I had no idea. I was so confused. Yeah, it was one of those things where it's like I I fully forgot that he was the first sword. Like that was so yeah. far to my mind, and then it hasn't come up in a while. In a while, yeah. And it's like in the next chapter, the beginning, where it's like let's talk about God shit. There's like a throwaway line where it's like Silver Fox gave up her first sword, and I was like, oh. Uh. That's what that is. Yeah, it's interesting that both in this conversation and echoing into the next conversation at the start of chapter 16, there are these like, oh, like, should we murder humanity? Like, what is their relationship <laughs> to the a mass? And kind of speaking in that way, um, which is kind of uh, insane in a sense, but um, mm-hmm. they they're echoing. It's 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 happening. Um, India, how did you feel about uh, their their confrontation here? Um, I think probably similarly to AJ, mostly I was like confused at first because I was like, wait, there I don't the way that death works here has been very weird in the last couple of books. But um, mm-hmm. yeah, I was excited about it. I was happy and sad. It was sad and also confusing because I had no idea the whole part about talk being like controlled really, really, really confused me. And I had no idea what was going on. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. but this kind of helped. So um, then we kind of let me ask. And so then, you know, we have this scene from Torrent where he's kind of dreaming about this in a sense. And we hear this little speech from Olar Ethel where she's kind of going off. You know, she's like listing all the things she's done, who she is, you know, <laughs> um, have some respect. Right. Um, put some respect on her name. Yeah. Put some respect on my name. Um what did you think about that? And do you now respect her? Mm. Do, what did you make of this moment? I am still kind of confused at her whole role and purpose. So, no, I, I, it didn't help at all. In fact, I was just like, oh, OK, cool, cool, cool. Will you be here in, I don't know, six chapters? So, no, but I respect it. I, I love a I love a strong character but i also don't like people doing um telling like i don't know i feel bad for talk so i I really don't really uh respect her at all um josh what did you make of this spiel and like i don't like her she sucks do do you believe everything she says here josh i don't believe anything anyone says in Mm. these books nice (laughs) because she says she's burned which she in in this passage now did she now okay i was reading that and i was like i don't think that's i couldn't tell if that's what she was saying or not um and i don't believe her if she said she's burned do not believe her whatsoever so Mm. because burns asleep and uh there's like i mean like burns a sweepy (laughs) i thought burns was awake no burns asleep because we've been inside of her blood veins and it was bad in there due to the rot from the crippled god I feel like we've met so many gods. One of them would has would have had to have known that Burns actually awake. We would not just be like meeting her right now. Could mm. be wrong, but that seemed fucking crazy. 
All right. Um, Which, so, where's the section? What it, What does she is, say this exactly? This is near the beginning of chapter 15. She, sa- she says a lot, but uh, like the part where she lists off all her names. Yeah, you mean? I was looking yeah. to see if she was going to say like something I recognized. Um, yeah, Aaron is shawl, mother to the heiress all. That, I remember seeing that, yeah. Wrath, Evane to the fork of sale, stone bitch to the jag hut. Very stone funny. bitch was my favorite, yeah. Very good. <laughs> um, mother beneath the mountain, Ayala Alal. I am I am burn, burn the, the sleeping, sleeping goddess. goddess. Yeah. Oh, there it is. I mean, look, that'd be crazy if big if true. Um, <laughs> but I didn't remember burn big if true. I didn't remember burn <laughs> being an undead elaine. So, um, Elaine. yeah, I don't know, man. I mean, it, Josh, it, it's, that's, it's, it's, it's it's because the government doesn't want you to know that. OK, OK. <laughs> okay. It's funny because like she starts off this whole diatribe to torrent with like, what do you know about elder gods? And he's like, nothing. And she's yeah. like, OK, great. Let me just tell you I'm everything. Exactly. Like, right. I didn't yeah, like it's, it. Yeah. There's no way that it's true. It's, it's just it's got to be like a just a flex because he doesn't know history like <laughs> or whatever. Um. All right, so next we, uh, Setuk and Kaffel are kind of have this sense something terrible is going to happen and they start to move and we'll talk about that more in a sec. But I did want to touch on um, the Chain Chamal's storylines that we see here. Both we see Sag Trox's point of view and we see Gunth Mach's point of view. Something that stood out to me was just learning about, um, is being able to learn about how like those memories are passed along and just a little bit more about what it means for those matrons and kind of the power of knowledge and how past relates to present in both like a knowledge tense and in kind of a spiritual sense. So that's something that stood out to me. Um, did anything grab your guys for eyes from this kind of, uh, from either of these change them all sections? Not specifically, but I did just get like, bad vibes like i'm i just i feel like like for some reason reading this section made me feel like oh the kachin chamal aren't gonna make it yeah Um, it's very sad like they're about to get wiped wiped out like it hasn't been hopeful throughout these books like every time we have a caliph scene she's like you're not connected to this world anymore i don't know how i'm supposed to help you etc etc um but something about this section just like i don't know it just felt kind of devoid of hope in some ways interesting and what do you mean by make it uh, yeah, you know, that's a good question. I, I don't know, because I feel like currently they're trying to claw their way back from basically extinction, right? Like, we've seen these undead ones in, in book three, and then, you know, we've seen them start showing up in Reaper's Gale, but, like, the situation has been pretty dire in this book, and it feels like this is kind of their last chance to, I don't know, come back to the world stage or something you know like i feel like if this storm or whatever that's that's coming like makes it to them they're just like gone they're just wiped out you know or like now there's now there's jag hut around but i guess they're friends right i don't know man like i feel i feel like they're gonna go the way of the jag hut i guess in the end Mm. um is is like kind of the vibes i'm getting Josh India, did you feel that way? Yeah, it was also just wicked depressing in general. Yeah, it's just yeah. Yeah, I feel bad for the matron. Yeah, it really, really sucks to be them. Not fun. Yeah, they should be more like bees. No, it's very bad for bees too, India. This made me remember all the bad <laughs> stuff I learned about bees. Oh, yeah. this is the bad um, stuff about bees. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Be- bees are so problematic. Am I right? I do just want to uh, read this uh, small section from Kalith uh, talking to Sag Uh She says, we are all the last of our kind, and you must have realized by now in this world and in every other, there is no such thing as refuge. Uh, and then she doesn't say, but she thinks the world finds you. The world hunts you down. So it's like pretty bad vibes i think yeah the whole chapter's pretty bad vibes um which uh almost brings us to that scene but first uh we do see scepter or coolis or i'm really struggling with this name today i don't know why no or coolis is great in 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 the first (laughs) in the first run reading the uh chapter summary summary pete said urculus and josh said did i do that I'm just uh, shocked you're not was... just going to include that. You know, I thought it was a really solid bit. Um, <laughs> well, I'm not going to put it in the fucking uh, okay. summary. If anything, it would go at the end. Well, you could, you could put it in right now. 
Scepter Urkul. Ur Ur have we said this name before? Urkulus? 100% we've said his name before. Scepter Urkulus looks at the battlefield of the Bargas. I, I, sorry, I think you have to say Urkulus. Yeah, Urkulus is, is. Yeah. Is Did so I funny. kill them? <laughs> <laughs> wow, that was hilarious. Oh, Maybe wow, I'll put what some a great music. I'm glad Josh's bit was brought out again and that we could all appreciate it. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so I, I, I don't know. Is there something here for you guys? I feel like this is um, just kind of following up on this kind of the path of destruction that is being left. Yeah. Can here. I just... Can I just get a refresher on who Scepter Urkulus is? <laughs> yeah, he's the leader of this army of the Ark and I. They're the people that the truce was made last time, but this is the dude leading the armies out in the field. And okay. his daughter was a commander of a big force, and they were the fighting. Daughter, the, yeah, the daughter. The daughter died. was in a fight with the Barghast, and it was like it was going really well, but then the Barghast were maybe going to win, and then the storm hit and killed them all. Oh, yeah. Okay. So he is kind of reflecting on whether he should continue got it to wage got this it. war uh, thank you and so he came across a place that had been stormed right like yeah is that okay and he says it's sorcery okay yeah all right thank you um all right well uh, i sorry i do just want to touch on really quick um it happens at first with torrent um but it happens a couple times throughout the this chapter and the next one where like it, it, we get like a subtle look up to the sky oh yeah and they're like they look up to the jade tinged sky and then we just don't talk about it <laughs> for the rest of this the chapter um it happens so, in the next one too yeah yeah I exactly think gessler, in the next i think gessler sees it one. yeah somebody sees something but it's like that vibe of like it's jade anyway and it's, I'm, I'm just like i'm waiting for something to happen you're like yeah. tell tell me a little more <laughs> yeah yeah like please can we focus on this i don't know how we're thinking about anything else huh <sighs> All right, so um, let's let's uh, let's get to it. Um, the next part of the chapter gets into uh, Hetan's hobbling. Um, her children are almost killed. They get saved. We see some um, of the Bargas kind of scheming and killing, and then at the end, um, we see a little bit about what Kaffel and, and uh, Tool may do in the future. And mm -hmm. we're just going to talk. about we're not going to really go beat through beat by all of that. We're just going to talk about it. Did anyone want to share um, their thoughts um, or their reaction when they when they read it? I can if no one else wants to. I was going to say just for clear, just for like uh, transparency, I chose to really pick and choose what I read. So I mm. did skip around through here. Mm. Interesting. Did not read some. Uh, I did not read a fair bit of the Hatan POV stuff to be honest. Okay. Okay. Well, well, um, thanks for letting us know, Josh. Um, so Josh, what did you make of it in that, through that lens? Like what did, what did you, well, I'm like, I, I really have a, uh, I'm really bad with torture scenes in all media. Like I'm like sure. really bad. I can't, I don't watch any gory shit. It's just like never been my thing. So, so when I, you know, when Peter explained, Hey, there's a terrible act of sexual violence and torture in here. I was like, cool. I'm just not going to read it because I know it's going to just like, I know it's meant to color everything else you read, but I know for me personally, I just like probably wouldn't be able to get through it. And so, uh, since I had to, cause we're doing a podcast, get through it. I was just, I just picked and choose where to read. And sure. when it got, when I was like, well, that's going to be too much. Just skipped, skipped a couple of chapter, uh, page paragraphs that's the word skipped a couple paragraphs ahead so mm. i got all the gist i know exactly what happened i just sure. didn't read it yeah uh i would say i think skipping the specifics um and just like reading around it i think you basically get the idea of it i think the pov stuff i don't know it's really just there i i feel like in kind of the other ways that we see povs of people right before their like final moments of life Mm -hmm. um where like you're described to how they are like being brutalized and then at the moment of their death we move on um and so i feel like kind of in that way this scene is handled kind of in the same way um where we move on to like this the final moment of you know i guess hatan as we know her um or like as like a person mm -hmm. um and then and then we just don't come back to that pov again that's that's kind of how i the impression i came away with i guess what do you mean by that as Hatan as we know her? 
Well, because I mean, obviously this this whole the whole act of hobbling is meant to dehumanize a person, right? It is meant to like tear them down in every single way, physically, mentally, emotionally, um, and violate everything. Um, and I, so I feel like we read up to the point of like, or we're, we're shown from her point of view up to the point where she, I don't know, I guess gives up in a way of, of like, you know, she, she can't fight back anymore. And so she doesn't. Um, and I think even right before that section, she's or like right before the end of that section, she says something like she now understands the mind of a hobbled woman or something. And so I think she goes from being Hetan in that moment to being a hobbled woman. Um, and then we just don't come back to it. If that makes sense. Yeah, I, I think I know what you mean. Um, India, um, what was your experience like reading it? Well, um, I actually, it was interesting because I started with the audiobook, mm. and I I, I couldn't actually keep the audiobook on um, because I like needed to know what was going to come because hearing it, I was like, it was brutal. Uh, mm -hmm. I think way, 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 way worse than reading it because when you read, I feel like you kind of maybe look ahead. And in this, it was just, I, I got, I don't even know, maybe a paragraph before I was like, okay, I actually have to physically read this because I, I mm. actually can't mm -hmm. listen to this anymore. Um, sure. yeah. it, I've never read anything like that in my life. And I also never had heard of the word hobble before um, this. And mm. I guess I didn't know it was like even a thing. Like I didn't know it was like, I, I think it's, I, I think it's like a very specific like yeah, hobbling yeah. in general just means to like make it, it to like impede movement mm -hmm. in a way. Yeah, uh, but I think this usage is not. I India, I too had never heard of this or anything like that before I read this book. So yeah, overall, like ten out of ten, super disturbing. Like I've never read anything like that in my life, um, mm -hmm. and it was it was wild, and I hated it. <laughs> mm -hmm. But I read it because. I don't know. I felt like like I don't I I I thought about not reading it and like skipping over parts too and then I was like nah, I I might as well like take it all in and mm -hmm. yeah, it was absolutely brutal. Yeah. Um, Pete, how did you feel? I mean, I we all we all like knew it was coming, I think, and even if we yeah, didn't know exactly, the book foreshadows it pretty the, heavily, yeah. I feel like. So, so um, to but how did you feel like coming back to it yeah, again? I'll speak to my experience. I mean, I think there are two different elements for me revisiting the passage this time. Not only had I read it before, but also as Joshua kind of mentioned, you know, we here behind the scenes had definitely had a discussion in the run up to this episode about how we just wanted to handle this this episode and, you know, just how to try and have it responsibly done. So I think not only was I aware, think like that was in my mind, but also I had kind of read it before. Um, so it was a really different experience than reading it the first time. Um which I would say was, um, you know, I vividly remember reading it for the first time. It was a terrible experience and I was deeply shaken. Mm. Um, and I mostly felt the same this time, but um, I think some part of me at least knew what I was, kn knew what to expect, you know, mm. not that it really made reading it much, you know, um, but uh, I guess there was a context around it. But um, yeah, no, I mean, it's a deeply uh, I'm deeply upset when I read it. You know, that's yeah. that's what I would say. Um, so, yeah, yeah, there are many there are many heartbreaking elements. And one of them, as you kind of touched on, AJ, is that um, head in at a certain point. I think the passage and like understands and, and somewhat almost I don't know. It's it's a very upsetting passage. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 100 um, percent. So, AJ, uh, you know, I know you kind of respond to Josh. Um, well, what was your experience reading this? Yeah, um, I was actually also I, I, I audio booked this uh, driving back uh, from my partner's parents house uh, over the weekend. So, I mean, it was, you know, definitely I, I get what you're saying, India, about like it being, I think, in some ways tougher to like 
not tougher as in it's like harder to understand, but tougher as in it's like like at the whim of the yeah. person reading it, you know? Yeah. Um, but but yeah, so I was I, I definitely I definitely understand what you say there. And yeah, I mean, it was it was pretty it was pretty terrible. I mean, I like we have we have seen a couple instances of torture throughout this series, and I think they're always pretty horrible. But obviously, I think this is the worst one. Um, and I think it's I don't know. I think it's interesting in the context of it being this like ritual and stuff um, that like these people are. I guess like subjected to or what, like the, 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 the bar people, not just uh, the people who have been hobbled. Like, it's just like, this is a thing that, that society does that this society does. So I thought that, I don't know. I thought that was interesting, I guess, but um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't know if I had maybe like overhyped it in my head uh, because we've spent literally since like book three talking about like, Oh, this terrible thing happens and it will happen eventually. And you're going to need to prepare for it. So I, I, when I had like, when when the Hetan POV had like finished and then the rest of the stuff we get from the other POVs and whatnot, like, I don't know, part of me was like, that wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. Um, but it is like obviously still horrible. But like, I don't know, I, I, I kind of said it when I when I was responding to Josh, but like in some ways, I feel like it was just another like act of violence being described to us, but the context around it, like of it being torture and of it being this like ritual thing just heightened that stuff a bit. But like the actual mutilation and stuff itself is kind of on par with some of the like stuff that we've read about in some of these battle scenes um, in some ways. Um, So yeah, I think that's where I ended up. Yeah, I mean, I think your experience, I mean, uh, I think all of ours is definitely influenced by the fact that we're making a show um, mm-hmm. and that is was an element of us reading this book. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I do hear you in, in what you're saying because, you know, people talk about this. You, we People are vague online, but people, sure. you know, this is known. The, the word, the, the hobbling word was thrown around, you know. Right, yeah. And I think, I think though, the book, like, foreshadows it so much oh definitely that it's kind of like mentally preparing you in some ways um so that doesn't need to show you so many of the specifics um it just kind of shows you the like beginning terrible moments of it and then the mental state of a person you know who is i guess being tortured or in the beginning stages of being tortured or whatever um yeah i don't know is there anything else anyone like to share about their experience reading this passage. I will save it for when the credits roll. Yeah, so like Pete said in the beginning, we're going to have a more kind of, I guess, specific yeah. discussion. I, I was going to say spoilery, but like we've all read the, I mean, if you're listening, probably you've read the book, but like we'll be responding to Amanda and Bill and and Steve's stuff from the tour reread, uh, whatnot, but. And step back from this more immediate space, you know. Yes, yeah, exactly. Um, one thing I will say, uh, to kind of move us on from it. I'm glad her kids survived. Yes. I think if the kids didn't make it, I, I, I don't know how I would be, you know what I mean? Like, uh, it's, it's a small bit of light in like an extremely dark moment. I feel so bad though for her because she thinks they're dead. Yeah. And that's like, yeah. I mean, that's just another part of the torture. Yeah. Oh, it's it's, it's, horrible. It's a mental. Yeah. No, it's terrible. Uh, not to not to shit on your um (laughs) silver lining (laughs) no no you're you're right though it's like it's it's heartbreaking stuff yeah Mm -hmm. and i mean it's it's a kind of dramatic irony you know because we know that they're at that point we know whether they're still alive we don't know that they're totally okay but we know that they're still alive wow Um, what dramatic irony (laughs) well dramatic irony (laughs) yeah let's talk about some ludo narrative dissonance anyway god it's so meta Uh, (laughs) nice (laughs) josh you want to throw some terms out no. No. Music theory. Plagal cadence. Yeah. Just really a lot of light motifs here in this section. Yeah, baby. All right. Um, well, listen, <laughs> thanks, guys. And before we want to move on, we just wanted to shout out Blake for joining us on Patreon. Thank you. And uh, happy new year to everyone. Um, and uh, chapter 16. Chapter 16. 
the Elder Gods meet. The Errant, here called Erastus, Suchulath, Commanderos, Mael, and Olar Ethel. They discuss the freeing of Tool and then of the Andy blood returning to Kirkanas. Erastus argues for killing the Younger Gods, a return of the Elder Gods. But Mael pushes back. They also speak of Whiskey Jack, the Jag Hut, and the many Malazans who have ascended to be powerful players. Erastus does not gain the allies he had hoped. Cuddle, drinking, is telling tales of past battles to rapt listeners. Gessler interrupts eventually, sending Wittershins to follow Cuddle after he leaves. They both are depressed. Bottle is listening to Cuddle, but leaves to think on the army, its veterans, and boredom. His rat watches dead smell and throat slit or cheat. Skulldeath watches Hellion unconscious. Herb watches as well, infuriated. Scannerau remarks to Ruth and Good that she knows that he is more than what he appears to be, but Good denies it. Bottle speaks with Sinter about the Dalhonese and sex. There's a little bit of a will they, won't they? Banishar looks at a map of the Colonnades and is depressed. He wishes Lestari Hill was interested in him. Lestari reflects on her meal with Tavor and the adjunct acting like a widow. She thinks about Banishar, who seems so gloomy. Stormy watches the sky and then speaks to Quickbed, who asks about his skin. Sunrise loves being a soldier under Dead Hedge and speaks with rum jugs and sweet lard. Tar chews on a large wad of rye leg. Pores gets him to spit it out before he literally dies. Baden Grook reflects on the Bone Hunters and the Empress. Fiddler and Balm speak about their pasts together. Finally, Breeze is preparing for bed when a new Atrocita enters. The Atrocita says she was exploring the Warrens, new to the Lethary Mages, and says there is a sympathetic linkage between some of the soil and the wasteland. Breeze says she has to explain this to Quick Ben, and she faints. We're back, baby. Um, and we're back with our, the best, the best gang you could ever want to hang out with. Top gang ever. Um, the Errant, Sekolath, Kalamandros, Male there. He's actually a chiller. And Olar Ethel, you know, a dream blunt rotation. Blunt rotation. Am I right? <laughs> um, Damn. All right. Uh, jokes aside, I think this, uh, you know, I have to tell you, I reread this chapter today. Um, and or last night and got way I sat read both of them back to back and rereading that outside of reading it next to chapter 15 really helped my experience so I I mm. got a lot more out of this not reading it right after 15 now um, that's shocking because as, as the person who just had to read that just that chapter summary I really felt like you hated this chapter so I'm glad to hear that you didn't <laughs> yeah re rewriting the summaries today was not a yeah. fun experience for me but um was was everyone else as hot on this Elder God hang out as me. No. No. <laughs> okay. Yeah, no. Um, I'll say this. Bored. Hey, hey, I'm going to say it. Maybe my least favorite chapter of the series. Whoa. Of the series. <laughs> this is the worst. The entire take. series. This is the worst scene Steven Erickson has ever read. I didn't say scene. I said chapter. Okay, I see. Yeah. Oh, Josh, are you doing a bit or are you being serious? No, I'm being sincere. I, in the middle of reading this chapter, I was like, I'm usually so in for the soldiers and I could not, I just could not. Wow. Josh, I hate to tell you, this is just regular soldier stuff. So yeah, I think I'm maybe, just seeing it maybe through a new light, you know, <laughs> maybe you're losing it. You're wow. losing your, uh, your critical eye. Yeah, That's I did. Not, I had a not good time. <laughs> oh that really, God. that really struck me. Um, so there's several parts about this opening I want to talk about. Um, India. Um, what did you kind of make of this whole like 
the air i feel like you're we're really learning a lot more about what the errant wants and how he's going about it in more specific ways so what did you make of this scene the elder god's plans and, and some of the stuff they talk about they really touch on a lot of different stuff here my thing with the people that are in this book that are like really 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 old is that the way that he like writes them speaking is it, it's just I can't fucking focus on it. It drives me insane. It's like yeah. they're old. So like they just drag on with the most like descriptive sentences for no reason. And my brain, I swear, it can't like focus. It can't yeah. and it won't. So I don't blame myself when I say I truly have no idea what is going on especially when it comes to the aerosol because i don't even like i'm so confused at what that person even does the uh, so the so aerosol could, you're yeah. talking so in this no in this chapter it's erastus who is, who is the errant the errant which is just another errant. name for the errant of errant. course yeah. errant. and what he does is be a shitbag that's what he does yes yeah. he's just shitty no, India, I totally agree with like reading these scenes sometimes. Um, I think for the most part, I've, I've been pretty hot on these scenes because they're just like super goofy. Um, but like, I think I totally agree with the way that they're written being this kind of like the Tice and are written in like a similar way. Like, like yes. Anna Rake is written a similar way where he's just ruminating all the time and just like saying these like big sentences for no real reason. Um, uh, but in in this sense, it's like that combined with like a, a kind of a light crup sensibility where we're all being kind of goofy males uh, here yeah there's like a, it's ma males here <laughs> it's like a, a family drama <laughs> situation like they're they're all just like siblings who are just like pulling each other's ears and like flicking each other in the nose all the time uh and that's like it's they're they're, they're <laughs> i feel like you need to read this uh, these sections with like bang sounds in the background. <laughs> like, did, did anyone anytime else? Anytime somebody says something silly, there's like a bonk or whatever. <laughs> yeah, that's a very funny that's approach, funny. AJ. Thank um, you. Did, I'm here for the laughs only. Uh, thank you. Um, that's why I picked up the Malzahn book of the fallen. Um, <laughs> that Especially is, chapter uh, 15. I just a hoot and a holler. Yeah. Um, <laughs> did anyone else pick up that everyone fucking is like over the errant in this chapter? Oh, yeah. The, it, yeah. It, it, it's that just was the only good part of this chapter was how much they were like, you're a fucking idiot. And he, I just feel like he's there. He's like, come on, let's do it. And it's just I'm imagining the room. You know, it's very beautiful. Yeah, I, I love I actually do love that sentiment specifically in this scene, because like in the earlier scenes with Commanderos and uh, I guess it's such a laugh of of him being like come on let's get the gang back together let's do whatever and they're like no fuck you why would we do that but in this scene specifically at the end of the scene they're like you fucked up our whole plan we were like we should not have all come together yet because now you've like tipped you know you've tipped whoever off that we're that we're that we're plotting so like you really fucked us here <laughs> um which i just think is so funny because it's not like we don't want to hang out with you it's just like you are a fucking idiot yeah <laughs> like it's really really good did you guys catch the name drop name drop baby two, yeah, two baby. name drops in this chapter we got yeah, whiskey so this, jack you kidding me is this the first we're hearing that he's like just like been ascendant all this time oh, well not who i was talking about but let's talk about this <laughs> oh <laughs> so whiskey jack name drop is who are you talking the, with about the guy I think Pete's talking about, and I can't think of her name right this second, uh, but Divorce? Withel's, no, Withel's wife, the wow. Tisty Andy. Well, we got, a, we got a lot Dr of stuff. Sand, just, yeah, and there that's it is. what I mean. It's just such a dense scene. There's so many names that could. No, I so could we don't even say Sandalat's name. We just keep saying that a Tisty Andy of royal blood has walked in. And that's right. what's tough is it's like, well, do we mean the queen of the shake, Twilight Yantovis, or right. do we mean queen of dark, according to Fiddler's deck of dragon, Sandalat, right. whatever. Queen of the shake, Twilight Yantovis. I just like how you're <laughs> just throwing out. Also every, known as. <laughs> yeah, it's, it, do, do we go with the deck of the dragon's queen or the queen uh, of the shake? One of those two. Yantovis. Yeah, um, <laughs> one of those two is of Tisty Andy royal blood and has entered yeah. Carcanus. Yeah. <clears throat> Here's what I was referring to. Uh, although I have another thing as well. Good call, Josh. There's many things. That's a great question, Josh. Um, good job. <laughs> nice job. Um, the, what I was going to say, nice job, Josh, um, was ah, good job, buddy. You did great. Loved I you. I fucking hate you. Was uh, 
You will turn it all into dust. Every dream, nothing but oh, dust, yeah. sifting <laughs> yeah. down through their hands. But oh. Elder God, these humans, they have left you behind. They don't need you to turn to dust all their dreams. Yeah. Yeah, I, I heard it. Weirdly, I didn't. I totally missed that. Name drop, baby. Book yeah. nine. <laughs> he says dust and dreams like eight times in that sentence. It was weird. <laughs> totally it was weird because like, you know, Steve never writes stage directions. It was weird for this one. He wrote while turning to audience. <laughs> <laughs> The errant looks directly at the camera. Yeah. Spoken as a bit of an aside. <laughs> um, downstage left. Yeah. Um, Very good. Yeah. So there you go, baby. D- I, we don't even need the gods to turn our dreams into dust. Yeah. I'm, I'm always saying capitalism's that. done yeah. that already. Now, now, wait, can we can we go back to my original question about Whiskey Jack? Yeah, sure. I don't I this. I was just trying to shout that out. What are you? No, let's talk good. about that. But like, so was this like the first time we got confirmation that Whiskey Jack has just been an ascendant all this time? Like, and so, this isn't the first time he's been himself or whatever. Yeah, well, because I guess that's what they were saying. I didn't. I wasn't sure if they were saying he's been ascended twice or if just that because he's been worshipped in two different ways. That has what has led him to be uh, ascended. OK, yeah, that would make sense also. Because, he, you know, I imagine if he was ascendant the first time, he wouldn't have had a bum knee that fucking got him killed. Uh, well, maybe. It's hard to say. We Well, uh, uh, who was it? It Was was it Opan who was fucking with it? Um, I don't think so. I don't uh, think he's conspiring against. Oh, against someone Whiskey. had convinced him. You're right. It was always. Yeah, in the somebody back of had his been head. pushing him in the direction of like, no, you don't need to get it healed yet. I but like forget secretly. I forget who that was. I think it was Opan because it feels like Opan it, a is like bit of a the, push and pull. Yeah. Yeah. Opan is like the the errant mirror for the like Warren's verse holds situation. Yeah. I can't remember who it is. Um, that's fascinating. You say oh, Opan's a mirror um, uh, because there's two of them. <laughs> And they're twins. Is, was that why you said it? No, I said it because the errant and Opan are like mirrors of each other. <laughs> yeah, I don't really know what you mean by that, if I'm going to be honest. Well, like but... the Warrens are a type of ma- magic and the Holds are a type of magic. And so each type of, you know, the Warrens need their pantheon and the Holds need their pantheon. And so the errant and Opan kind of occupy similar seats in their respective mirrored pantheons. Yeah, um, I, don't, my head. I don't really see it outside of that. They're both somewhat... Um, little scamps the errant is constantly talking about nudging people and and opan's whole thing is pushing and pulling like what are you fucking talking about oh that's a good point you got me there <laughs> they both like to nudge yeah um so uh the name drop i was gonna actually bring up um was uh the name drop of one crippled god oh you, oh yeah. yes Did you guys catch this no yes. no um it was a joke hey? it was oh okay <laughs> Uh, they're speaking about uh the crippled god uh and uh they say he is nothing among the gods his allies break and scatter among the mortals corruption devours his cult and his followers are the wasted and the lost Kamen Saad has no army to summon to his defense his body lies in pieces scattered across seven continents he's as good as dead little name drop baby little name drop little Kamen Saad is there anything else anyone wanted to highlight from this opening section i really enjoyed it i know that it's not uh josh hates me and hates this section no this section was it it was better than the rest of it i yeah Uh, i'm so curious what you didn't like about the milk the the soldier stuff i Uh, i agree with aj i feel like this is just there's nothing tell you um i I thought it's really fun to see mail again too Yeah, yeah that was interesting see i definitely learned a lot more i completely i can constantly forget that Suckle is the daughter of Kilmanderos and that they've got some shit to do with Forker LaSalle or that they are Forker LaSalle. I like constantly forget that. Oh, you d- fucking Peter, you buried the lead. We learned what the storms are in this in this section. Well, we don't know what they are, but we learned what they're called. There's a ton in the section. That's why yeah. I'm like, so far away from your microphone. Yeah, there's a lot in the section, Josh. Yeah, we, only- we we learn that. 14 Jack Huts fought and defeated 100 and then a word that began with the letter N. Naruk. Yes. Which, now that the you've said it Naruk. out, now that you've said it out loud, that does sound familiar. Are those the short tails? Yes. It's gotta be. Pete's giving me a look. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I did not. So the storm is short tails. We figured it out. Interesting. I don't get it. Damn. Thanks, Josh. Totally missed that. Also. I guess that explains why the Kachin Shamal were so fucking afraid. That does make sense somewhat now. 
Yeah. Interesting. And I guess we have only seen them undead, right? That's what the un or no. Were we've those? only I don't think we've ever seen a short tail. Or if we have, it's been like one. Yeah, Pete. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I hate that laugh. What? I'm just going to hey, if you don't answer, I'm going to google it right now. I was going to say a short tail and a long, but I forgot the lyric. I don't know it. Sword arm J- jacket. It's jacket Pete. Jacket. Um I, I it's all I got. I love Chuck. It's like you guys never liked Linda fucking cake. All right, short tail and a long jacket. Speaking of long Today, I think, you know what I just realized? I do know why I didn't like this section. It has just clicked. I just remembered what it was. I watched a lot of TikToks of people talking about how many books they read in 2022. And I was like, man, how'd they do it? And then I saw a TikTok that was like, if you're wondering how we read so much, you know, the average book is 350. And I was like, fuck right off. That's what my my partner read, I think, like 30 books this year. While reading this, this section... I was just like, yeah, and I'm just trying to get to page 815. And I was like, I feel like I just started this book. I feel like yeah, we've not even been too. on it that long. And we're 800 goddamn pages in. Well, what, what, what's tricky is that because, as you may know, we're it's kind of linked to Crippled God. So really, we still are in. We're firmly in the rising action. Like I've read two. <laughs> I like other people would say I've read two, if not three books based on how small the font well, is. Because you have the page books. number. Right. Yeah. And the font, yeah. too. Yeah. And Josh, as we all know. The more books you read, the better a person you the are. The bigger, the better person you are. Yeah. So I totally understand your concern. Well, yeah. and just um, um, to put that out there quickly, Dust of Dreams is um, nineteen hours and fifty three minutes. Oh wait, no, 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 way longer, way longer. Ooh. Yeah, I was gonna say that's like yeah, that's probably the remaining left. or something. Yeah, that is the remaining. <laughs> that is the remaining. Oh, um, and we're halfway <laughs> through. And we're halfway through. We are slightly. Mo- we are more than slightly halfway. Slightly more. Yeah, slightly more. Um, I would more say there's that. still 500 pages left. That's my guess. If I had to guess, anyhow, anyhow. All right, so let's move on to all the soldier stuff because basically after this, it's just soldiers hanging out. So uh, we come to Cuddle, who we really had a hard time remembering <laughs> the last time on the show. Guy had some 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 testiness in the Discord over that. Yeah, I mean, I was a little out of it. I'm not gonna lie to you, but um. So, yeah, so Cuddle's recalling some of the stories and um, kind of what, who the bridge burners were, in a sense, and Bottle's kind of listening nearby. India did uh, any of that. You know, how did Josh really bounce off the soldier stuff? Did it did it strike you a certain way? The soldier stuff, I think, is always boring. Um, I do like (laughs) Bottle, though, so I don't know. Nothing really struck me as interesting. Also, to be honest, I was really kind of checked out in both of these chapters. So <laughs> I didn't really like I was reading it, but I was like kind of similar to Josh. Like, all right, when am I done? Yeah, more yeah. so than normal. I was just like, can't wait to not be reading. Nor- yeah, I'm really curious why you feel that way. I mean, if you don't have anything specific, that's fine. But like, I feel like reading this section was just like standard yeah. soldier fair soldier. like bottle is being a rat and like he just keeps seeing people go off to have sex which is like so funny yeah, I, everyone's having sex yeah i guess it's just that it's it's tough to go from so crazy important shit to mm. what feels like mindless drivel mm-hmm. and i know there's a reason for it but that don't make it easier to read yeah i i so it's funny you say that josh i also was reflecting on why like how this follows chapter 15 and i do think it's i'm you know it's probably a reprieve in some sense because you know it's pretty chill chapter mostly it's just hanging out and i think it is interesting that everyone's having sex that that's a recurring theme you know um i don't really know what to make of that but it you know a lot of sex in this chapter it's the climax of the book baby we're all climaxing yeah (laughs) we're all climaxing um (laughs) All right. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, but I mean, look, even like that leads to so bottle and center. Um, center has this whole scene where she's just talking about Dal Dal Han, the Dalhanese and, and sex and how it worked for them. And like that was really interesting to me. And I wish there was more of that type of stuff. Mm. And um, you should look into polycules then. Mm. nice nice thanks josh uh, that definitely what i meant 
Um, and um, yeah, I was definitely curious about why that was here. I don't know. I don't know if you guys have any thoughts about that or just thoughts about this following and these chapters mm -hmm. paired in a sense, although I don't think they're really paired in the book, but they do come after yeah. each other. Um, I do think you're right, Pete. Like the books are always very conscious. I feel of like when there's a really heavy section, we follow that up with something a bit lighter. Um, and so I feel like this section kind of just starting off with like the sitcom that is the elder gods and then going into just hanging out with the soldiers is just like, it's a palate cleanser in some ways. Um, and I think that's kind of the, the, the like meta purpose of the, of this chapter is to kind of just like, mm -hmm. You know, like, I, uh, I think it's just kind of a, a, a breath um, before we get back into it with whatever starts happening in these next chapters. I don't know. I'm just trying to th like because I'm trying to think about I am now looking at the notes here and Pete, you have written is bottle hot. Yeah, <laughs> I that was that. that I was skip that. That was something I was reflecting on while I was writing this. I mean, um, bottle would say no. Nice. The Which thing is this makes it a more of a yes. <laughs> I've come away feeling that bottle is definitely hot. It's that One Direction song. You don't know you're beautiful. That's what makes you beautiful. Yeah. You know, bottle. I think bottle doesn't know he's beautiful, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. I guess I've kind of always kind of pictured bottle as like homely in some ways. You know, I don't know how polite <laughs> bottles fucking ugly as shit. No, uh, no, I, I don't know. Um, but yes, to, to get back to the actual stuff I was saying, uh, to get back to the stuff I was actually saying, I don't really feel like there's a whole lot of like stuff happening in this chapter. Like we get the whole stuff in the beginning with the Elder Gods and then we get all the just the regular soldier stuff. And then there's like this part with uh, Lestara and Tavor. And then we kind of move on to Quick Ben doing some stuff. And, you know, it's just like there's just stuff going on. And yeah, it's I mean, not you're, like you're checking on a various character. Dynamics. Right. Yeah. We're just I mean, checking like, in. We it's see not... what dead hedges squad is looking a little bit more like we, Which, you know, him being dead hedge. Really good. Is Badass name. Unreal. It's so Ooh. good. One thing that definitely called me was the Lestara yield stuff, but that's actually preceded by Banishar. And I think we're seeing a little bit more in to, you know, we're kind of getting a sadder picture of him here, you know? Um, and Josh, mm -hmm. I wonder if you have any thoughts about Banishar. I don't think we've actually been in his POV in quite a minute, if I'm it's, mistaken. It's been a while. I, when reading this, all I could think about is, why do you need to be alive still? Like, <laughs> what the I, fuck, I'm so curious. <laughs> what are you doing to why earn aren't your you life? Dead, exactly. You piece of well, look, shit. He, he betrayed them by bringing the errant there. Like, he was sure. working with the errant. They know he was working with the errant. Josh, it's, Josh, can, can you um, not even mistake, make a mistake anymore? okay no. can you I, you Woke can't even culture. make you can't even make one mistake yeah you know oh, i hate you um so you, up what, yours you, woke moralist you just <laughs> we'll see who nudges who yeah so, so what josh uh, you just feel like he's sus and shouldn't be in the camp exactly mm. wow that was the among us sound um really good, cu really culture good. baby um the internet um, so that's definitely followed up because lestara is looking a little bit about him and then she kind of reflects on a recent dinner with the adjunct Tavor, India, what did you make of Lestara here, checking with in with her and reflecting on her dinner with Tavor? I <clears throat> love Lestara, and I don't know. Truly, I think that, one of the uh, top best characters, just saying. Yeah, I think that she brings like a a real, like a, like more of a realness to like Tavor, and and a, I, I like seeing their conversations together. I don't know. I think that she like. Tavor feels I don't know I don't know if Tavor feels more comfortable with her but I I like how her and Tavor like bounce off of each other what do you what do you think of Lestara saying Tavor is like a widow here is she kind of felt like it I, I kind of get where she's coming from mm. why well I mean she did lose her lover three books ago and that has never she did has she? never remember yeah I was wondering I if that woman was dead or alive Nah, she beefed it when the air when the aerosol kind of took over her body and kind of burned it away. Mm -hmm. That was yes, you know. Well, she kind of is like a widow, then, isn't she? Yeah, I do get what she's saying. Well, my problem is 
I don't know if I've ever been like, boy, widows aren't good for anything but being sad, huh? It is interesting here to wear the mask of the widow was to reject life itself, which just feels like a pretty interesting thing for Lestar to think about like, yeah. women who have lost like a partner. It's just like kind of wild. I do get what she means. I just I just wish there was a, a, a word for that that didn't make me only think of women being sad after their partner dies, you know? I think it's just sad. Like, I yeah. <laughs> like, if she had just replaced the word widow with depressed every time, I would have been like, that's true. I, that's too, would fair. not... Would yeah, probably to wear not the mask want, of the depressed. Yeah, I would not want my commander itself. to be like, maybe death's embrace is the, is the, the goal for us all. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. It's, what it's, was her it, widow's name? Widow, widow, or widow ease? To Amber. To Amber. Tamber. Tamber. Um, Such an irrelevant character. Okay. <laughs> fucking, fucking savage, brutal. dude. Whoa. I just want to say, it seems relevant to me in this conversation. But yeah, so AJ, you mentioned seeing the jade stuff in the sky. Um, and then, kind of, one of the final scenes of this chapter. Uh, is this kind of interesting scene? I do where, just really um, want to touch on before we get to the the breeze thing uh, of Quick Ben being like, "Hey, what the fuck's up with you?" to to Stormy being yeah. like, "I I see I see what's going on here," and Stormy's like, "I don't know what you're talking about." Uh, Nothing. Which is very, I'm normal. I'm regular. I am a plain person. <laughs> I'm a regular. My skin's always look like this. <laughs> It's just interesting that, like, I don't know, I feel like it's been such common knowledge for so long for us that to see somebody be, like, surprised by it, like, mm -hmm. them being ascended sure. or whatever the shit, um, is Is just, this the first time he's noticed? That felt, I thought he was just, like, trying to probe a little bit, but was I it I couldn't tell. I read it like it was the first time, like, I, when I, I... I was struggling to decide. Yeah, I hear you. It did kind of feel like he was just like, wow, weird. <laughs> All right, so the last scene here in this chapter is Bryce uh, has this conversation with one of the new mages of the Lothari, and it's about this linkage between some of the soil in the warrants and in the wasteland, and then uh, do we have any leads on what that yes. may be? Do we feel like here there was the potential for flirting? <laughs> because oh. I'm going to say this, I've never... I, you don't look at a woman and think but the lines around her mouth really do add something. Like you don't think that and not want something. Um, so maybe okay. he's just appreciating. Okay. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, interesting. India, what do you think? Uh, I more men about the linkage, but I guess this linkage as well could be an option for you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm confused at the question. Um, so there's kind of this linkage between the soil and the Warrens and in the wasteland. And they're like, what's that about? Yeah, there's oh, the dirt yeah, that's yeah. moving on its own. Yeah, yeah. You know, I I don't I, know. You've cracked that code. <laughs> yeah, I, I suspect it as much, Inch. So lay it on me. <laughs> well, I actually think that it is, um, you know, I think that the soil is connected to the Warrens mm. in some way. Mm. And it's just a magical thing well spooky action at a distance baby exactly i think that there's definitely some magic at work here mm. i feel like that's a safe assumption i think magic's probably involved i'm gonna guess so gun to my head could be <laughs> um some sort of magical element yeah um, yeah Definitely magical. Definitely magical. Um. All right. I had a pause. To a H N. Did you guys? In, this just was a nothing chap. Then it didn't really strike you a certain way. I had a great time. Just like the record. The show. dirt stuff or the whole chapter. The dirt stuff. No. I no. The, the dirt thing, stuff was but... sick. I have no idea what's going on, but it's interesting. Yeah, that part was cool. <laughs> okay, Josh. It falls away, kind of forms into a person, and then falls back yeah, away that was, again. That sounded sick. Pretty cool. Immediately after someone says, uh. uh quick ben's full name uh <laughs> she gets knocked out and then the the sand does stuff so that's fun it is fun <laughs> it, it's it, it's a fun comic beat to end the chapter on yeah comic i don't know oh i read it as comic i don't think it's very funny i think it's pretty dire um okay. breeze seemed pretty worried you know aj sometimes you just have to laugh you know when things get so dark <laughs> jesus you <know>? christ <laughs> that's so true that's so true all right. Um, and I always say that. 
can I get a quick uh can I get a quick temperature check? Can I ask Wait. a temperature check question? 71 in here. Nice, Josh. Um we have to this next episode will be us talking about the end of this book, like the end of this section of mm. the book. Mm. And I have no idea what the fuck is going to happen. Not a clue. <laughs> I was just curious if you guys had a beat on anything. <laughs> I have no fucking idea. I yeah. felt like th- like this chapter made me harder to know what's going to happen next because nothing happened, you know? But also just so much happened, you know? It's yeah. just like a bunch of little stuff. And so I'm like, I don't know if, if we're like... I have no idea how far away these guys are from fucking everything else that's going on. Yeah. I mean, I feel like there's going to be, we know tools going towards the Bargast, and we know that the Scepter uh, Herculus is heading there too. Could be a big standoff there, wipe out all the Bargast. Yeah, I was going to say, do we think we revisit that stuff before we get to book four? I don't know. I don't think so. Right, I feel like that's book four stuff. So, like, what the fuck is going to happen in these next two chapters? I don't know. We could go back to the Burning Tears, I suppose, or oh, the Grey Helms. You know, they're there still. Yeah, I don't know. What are you thinking? I would like for the bar gas to all die. Sure, agreed. <laughs> so, hopefully, that except for Bockle. Um, that's. Uh... I want to take them all out. Sometimes there's collateral damage, I guess, you know? That's what they say. <laughs> I don't think collateral damage is a targeted attack on an entire race of people, but okay. <laughs> um, okay. Say what you want. Anyway, sorry, I just wanted to see if anybody Where's else... Where's Carsa, am I right? Oh, oh, preach. You know what, preach. India, where is Yeah, Karsa? where is Carsa? You're so right, India. Fuck me. There is all the people from last book who could at any moment show up and I would not be. Sur- Do you remember fucking Mappo? He and was going through some shit with Burn. He could show yeah. up at any fucking moment. I'd be like, there's sure. all the people in the in the sword. Oh, that shit's going on. And there's the people in the hive. Oh, my God. <laughs> there's so many. There's so much things. stuff happening. In and so much stuff. What? I'm so I'm so you relieved you brought it up. I too thought we needed a few more points of view characters in <laughs> <Yeah>. the story. <laughs> I think we just I think we needed a few more people in here. You know, there's just not Carson's with his daughters now, right? Um, oh yeah, you're right. Uh, that's, that's the last time we saw old K Dog. Um, yeah, okay. <laughs> all right, everybody. K Dog. Well, listen. Th- thanks for listening today. Uh, let us know what you think of the show at Ten Very Big Books at Twitter and Gmail. Uh, uh, if you're going to join in about our, our hobbling conversation, as we said, I hope you're being respectful, open-minded, and uh, see ya. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Stay tuned after the credits if you want to hear us have a little more conversation about that. But other than that, thanks for listening. I say come. You say passion. Come. Passion. passion. Hello, everybody. Producer AJ here recording this for the first time without headphones. It is weird. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the podcast. As we said in the episode, we will be having another discussion surrounding the hobbling after these credits. Uh, we talk about the Tory reread response from Amanda and Bill, as well as Steve's write up uh, on that post. If that's a combo you're interested in hearing, stay tuned. If you'd like to give us your thoughts or feelings about this or any of our other episodes, you can always email us 10 books at gmail.com, tweet us at 10 very big books, or you can head on over to our Discord bit dot ly slash vbb discord that's capital v capital b capital b capital d discord that link will also be in the show notes thank you to all of our wonderful patrons over on patreon if you would like to financially support the show you can head on over to patreon.com slash 10 very big books that link will be in the show notes and as always thank you so very much to dan gezer for making our spectacular cover art you can follow him on twitter at a underscore w underscore dan g for the hottest flyers game time takes thank you as well to resident person i'm going to meet in person this weekend scout wilkinson for the special art she will be providing for this season you can follow her on twitter.com slash humble goat and of course the wonderful music in today's episode including the remixed intro and outro track is by the one the only amaranthan from his album simulant rain which you can find along with his other music on bandcamp.com links to their pages will be in the show notes 10 very big books will be back in two weeks on february 3rd talking about dust of dreams chapters 16 and 17 if you're sticking around for the hobbling conversation i'll talk to you in a minute otherwise i'll talk to you then and thank you so much for listening honestly this is just such a that was the most wild reading experience I've had in a a long time. (laughs)
Yeah. I was not yeah. expecting it to be as bad as it actually was. Really? Yeah. yeah, I have to tell you, I somewhat had an experience like AJ where I definitely think I thought because I have to tell you, the first time was really terrible when I read it. Sure. And, you know, so definitely some part of it is like, oh, it's actually was uh, it was a different experience than the first time. But I think that's mm -hmm. just because of that. But yeah, it is such a profoundly fucked up thing that I don't really know if I can convey the experience to someone who has not sure. read the book. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. 100 like, percent not not that i'm really trying to but it's just yeah, like but it's just like saying that it's like oh it's a scene where someone gets tortured really brutally is just like like i feel like is not what it you know what i mean in some ways that's like not what the scene is well, it would know. be one thing if it like wasn't in the pov but like yeah sure. oh my god it's just and, and just like some of it to me was so like it wasn't even just like the actual scenes of like mm -hmm. the torture itself it was like also everything around it like yeah like the people that weren't like i don't even know no you're you're i think you're 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 really tapping into to something india um, can we just say we're in it yeah I'm right. okay um like i think it, it's not just the act itself or that pov moment it is everything surrounding it is just like this is so fucked is like all i kept thinking like with with everything going on and like the the scenes or the the povs of uh, the other women in the tribe and the the one who like made the nine year old do the stop the stop that lady stuff. is the worst yeah and it's just like it's it's just all fucked up you know it's I was like very all bad happy to get to see her die yeah literally yeah also the feeling that you like can't like if I were reading this by myself for myself mm. yes I wouldn't I probably would have just like skimmed sure until it was over. Sure. But like, because I knew that we were going to have this conversation, I was like, you can't like, I really wanted to be present in the conversation, mm -hmm. but I don't know. I just, it, it was just like the equivalent of watching like a really violent movie, like wide eyed. And I, I didn't like it. Mm -hmm. I was very sad. It was, and it left me afterward too. Like after I had to take a break, like mm -hmm. I read chapter 16, I think like even going through 15 i had to put it down and then i'd be like all right i can come back to this in like an hour i need to go mm -hmm. clear my head because yeah. it actually really like and i have to say for steve like damn well done because i was f personally fucked up by reading that mm -hmm. yeah it's a it's a really really affecting scene uh the yeah. feet the feet mm. the fucking feet and the two dozen men mm -hmm. And the kicking and the beating and yeah. the, uh, everything, everything about it was just like, it, you can't see me right now, but my hands are on my face and I can't. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just it's it's just brutal. It's that's absolutely brutal. What do you think of Pete? No, I mean, there's I, I, like, to be honest, like, this is why some part of, like, I don't even know outside of responding to the post. Like, I, I don't really know if I like I just I feel really bad reading it is really bad it feel make it makes me really sad mm -hmm. um it's very difficult to read um and oh I, and i don't even think i just I, I don't know how anyone could read that and not feel that way i mean i just like yeah. i feel like that's like of course you know yeah yeah have you ever yeah. read any kind of book where there's been like a scene like violent no. like that ever no, not at all no I, I'm sure there's other stuff like this in a sense or, no, for you sure. know, but this is easily the most graphic thing I've probably read in my life e easily. Really? Not, not even not graphic. Graphics, okay. the wrong word. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's the that's what we're what I mean. The most. Yeah, I think it's I think this, a lot of, easily the most disturbed I've been reading a book. Yeah, I think a lot of the disturbance comes also from like getting the like I had said earlier, like having the context of it being a ritual, like uh, and the purpose of it is to like take everything from a person like and stuff like the fact that it's like a I don't know. It's like there's almost rules written down about how to do it. And it's just like, I don't know. And, and the fact that there is this like a society that it's, you know, that this is just a thing that happens sometimes. And it's just like, yeah, everybody knows the rules to this. So we're all doing it. It's just, yeah, it's, it's disturbing. Yeah. 
so as we mentioned, we kind of included this uh, post from the Tor reread that uh, kind of the two people who ran that blog wrote about their experience reading it and kind of reflecting on the hobbling. And then Steven Erickson also wrote a comment. Um, so we all read that. And um, maybe we'll talk about that for a sec now. Josh, did um, any of their comments, Bill, Amanda, or, or Steven Erickson's comments stand out to you? Or how did you feel reading this post? I thought it was a really insightful post overall. I really liked Amanda's a lot. Um, I did not fully get Bill's. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> Bill, Bill somewhat took loses a really. The post. Bill took a really strong pivot in the with you know pretty immediately, and I didn't follow. But a, yeah, we talk a lot about the Walking Dead and Bill's post. Yeah, <laughs> and I understand where that's going. I just disagree with it. But, yeah. you know, uh, I get I fully get where he's coming from. And then Steve's comment is classic Steve. Incredible. Really good. Um, he, he's got a lot of great stuff in there about, you know, the why of what he did. And uh, I, I think it's just all great. I think it's a, a really solid read for someone grappling with this section. Again, didn't read this section fully okay with my decision to do that i get why steve fully says people should be reading it i'm just not gonna but i get where he's coming from aj what about, what about you would you walk away did you walk away with anything from this post um no i mean i think amanda's is like you know obviously very in line with a person who's reading it for the first time um i identified with a lot of the stuff she was saying uh including the like well if it's in there there's got to be a reason for it and so i have to read it mm -hmm. um and like, I understand the, you know, the reasons for it being in there and, it, you know, these books kind of encapsulating all of life from the the best to the worst and everything, um, like what it means to be living or whatever. Uh, Amanda has this line here where she says, I can't say it's necessary or, or sorry, uh, this scene, no matter how troubling and haunting, how triggering feels important. I can't say necessary. I just can't. But important. Um, and I get that in in the way that like this scene carries weight. And I, I don't know, I think uh, like it's it's obviously unlike ever anything that any of us have ever read, at least speaking for me, Josh and in India, like and so I think, you know, it is a thing that is I don't know, it's it's, it's, it's I'm, I'm, I'm just kind of speaking around this this point of, you know, I can't say necessary, but important, but it's like it's not something that we encounter. And so when it is there, I think it's important for us to reflect on that stuff every once in a while you know like terrible stuff happens in the world and it is stuff that is like worth thinking about and putting your your mental energy toward um for at least a little bit in in hopes that maybe it'll you know trigger some sort of want to create a better world or something or or whatever it whatever it might uh snowball into um so that's how i felt about amanda's um bill's was interesting i think bill comes at it from more of a media criticism angle um where he is obviously comparing it directly to this scene in the walking dead um and like talks a lot about um like uh he brings up you know like the things they carried and stuff but yeah i don't know i um he says that like he's just kind of meandering thoughts here um which i totally understand uh but uh there this like one of his final lines uh and that's something is uh, because the violence all violence is in a context of saying something and that's something is exactly the opposite of an authorial view that would allow for gratuitous violence it is the never out of earshot plea for the twin concepts of compassion and empathy the concepts that so permeate this series that you simply cannot read any act of violence without them being bound to that plea um, I think that's a really good line for for how to think about j just all the violence in these books. Um, it's it's never well, not never there. It's it's never gratuitous. Um, there are definitely moments where I'm like, that was cool. Like when Animander Rake and, you know, uh, Decimal Tour are fighting in the last book, like that's a cool fight. Um, but in these moments where it's like just like regular people committing atrocities against other regular people i think all those moments are kind of wrapped up in this like like he said these twin concepts of compassion and empathy of just like this is the world these people live in and this is how they are socialized or you know culturally culturally raised to participate in it so that's how i feel about their reactions 
your reaction to their reaction. Yes. This is a show all about reacting to reactions. Yeah. Um, it's so, like that. Sorry. It's like that Bo Burnham bit uh, in inside where he is reviewing himself, reviewing a song that he just put. And then that review begins to become a review of the review of the review. And it just keeps looping. It's very funny anyway. So if I may react to your reaction, please to Bill's reaction. Um, no, I was just joking. Uh, but, um, Oh, <laughs> I'll, we can talk more. I got lots of thoughts, but um, please. Inge, um, did you walk away with anything from these posts? Yeah, um, yeah. Amanda's was. Uh, I liked Amanda's response. I think I thought hers was short and sweet and to the point. I didn't have any like real, I don't know, thoughts on hers. I agreed with everything she said. Bill's was long. His posts are always a bit longer, and. I don't know. He said one thing that I was just like, Which the series one? has never been afraid of showing of showing me the worst in human nature. We've seen rape and murder and truly evil acts. Luckily, we've always seen we've also seen the best in human nature to balance it all out. I where where have we seen the best in human nature in this? I feel like this book is like either like ha 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 or I mean, I get. I don't know. I never really feel like super uplifted when I when I finish one of these chapters. Um, and then something else that I was like, kind of, I don't know, like, I'm not saying that I, I disagree, I guess, but I was just I just it rubbed me a little weird. I'm trying to find the other one. I don't know. At some point. He's pretty much saying, like, we've seen a lot of really bad things in this. So, like, in my opinion, this isn't, like, worse than anything else. It's just kind of on par with the bad things that we've seen. And I I just, I can't agree. I can't agree. I feel like this is, like, so much more intense and long and drawn out than any other, like, mm. bad scene that this is worse. Mm. And not in like a way that like I think it's it shouldn't have been in that in the book or whatever. But I do think that it's it stands out for a reason and it's talked about more for a reason. And it just is really violent and mm. really disturbing. Um. So yeah. and also the Walking Dead thing I, I thought was funny, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Cause like it, it really was like two and a half paragraphs of like, but in Walking Dead, in, in <laughs> extreme detail, this happened, and I thought that was like, I, I, I did giggle because I did watch Walking Dead. Um, I'm sure. When, so. I'm sure when it was written, it was timely. You know. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah, yeah 2014. Yeah. yeah, this was peak Walking Dead. Yeah, literally. Um, but and like I get it. I but I just I thought it was funny uh, because uh, like Walking Dead was also. No, I don't know. I just didn't. I, I got it, but I also was like, "This is silly." Yeah. Well, no, no, no. I, you know, I'm just gonna say it. Walking Dead, way worse show than these books. You know, um, <laughs> very now, brave. I, and, and I've watched a lot of The Walking Dead, but Walking um, Dead is brutal. Yeah, I definitely. Um, let's talk about The Walking Dead. Can we? <laughs> Am I right? Um, yeah, no, Inge. I agree with a lot you said. Um, I think all you guys really touched on some interesting stuff. Um, I think all I would add is um, I think that talking about this is pretty difficult. And I think, you know, I think the way they, the framings they approach um, potential criticism or potential ideas in, in response to this are things I, you know, I, I kind of, I agree with them. You know, it's like, I don't really find this scene to be like exploitative in mm -hmm. that sense or, or to really be lingering or relishing in the violence. Right. Um, I don't really think that's something that that happens when when Erickson tackles this stuff. And I do think generally there is some general moral imperative to take care of people and listen to experiences and difficult stuff, you know, and, and that includes sexual violence and, and this type of stuff. Mm -hmm. So I agree with that. But um I, I do think I'm somewhat, you know, like like I agree that it's important to listen to survivors and, and that, but I don't know if that equates to reading this passage and this thing in fiction. Do you know what I mean? 
um not not this being in fiction i don't know i don't know if um like for example i think if someone chose not to read this i don't really think they're like i think they can i like i think that's totally fine you know and i don't think that means anything you know Mm -hmm. um and and i think that's what somewhat when i read erickson's comment there and i think some other sentiment i've read elsewhere i almost feel like it's like saying there's an undercurrent of putting an imperative to read this Mm -hmm. which i don't know if it's this in particular but i do think um yes like seeking out and understanding the world is probably some sort of imperative Yeah. yeah Yeah. And I I feel like, I mean, we talked about the, the context of time with Bill's thing, but I think the context of time with when this book came out, it's like we live in, even from 2014, we live in such a more like connected and everything is out there for you to read at all times world that it's like, yeah, I know this stuff is happening, you know? And it's like, I know this sucks and I really hate it. And I feel like maybe I'm trivializing the point a little bit, but like the the, the book here and like Steve's uh, reaction in, in the post saying uh, sometimes uh, the hobbling is uh, the nadir of human condition. Sometimes just seeing the nadir reminds us still of how far we have to go. And like I'm constantly thinking about how shitty humanity is uh, and how shitty other humans are to humans all the time. Um, just by nature of the stuff I am able to see online at the touch of a button for hours and hours a day. Um, so I think just the context of which this scene was written and the context of like when I am reading it now uh, is is totally different. So I think I totally agree with you, Pete, that like if if you can't handle reading this here, like you're going to get your dose of like the nadir of humanity somewhere else uh, th- in the same day. You know what I mean? Mm, yeah but i do agree you know Angie. i know what you're saying you disagreed with bill there and i do agree that this is um obviously the most intense sequence in a sense um but i do feel that it is basically in line with how sexual violence is approached in the rest of the series you know Um, yeah for sure like like i don't think it's approached really any differently and i think like, if you want to have a conversation about how the series approaches it, I think as as we've brought up those questions before, I, I think, you know, I, I, I don't know. I, I, I guess I don't really see something specific here that I don't do, if that makes any sense. Do you know what I mean? For me. But it is obviously a really intense scene. And if people don't want to read it or, you know, I totally get if this is the line for some people, you know, mm-hmm. I think. um the way that this differs from kind of some of the other sexual violence and just some of the other violence in general that we see throughout these books is like, there is such a sense of kind of hate behind it. You know, like there's a very intense emotion. It's not just people fighting a war or anything. It is like people committing an act of violence against a person that they have been like waiting to hurt or something, you know, like there, there's just so much more emotion behind it, which I think makes it, and we get this the, this talk of like betrayal from just like every person uh, in the uh, in the tr- in the camp, and it's just like that, that stuff's just really upsetting and 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 brutal, and and it's just really really tough. So I think that's also a big part of why this kind of stands out so much, um, like put up against the other acts of of violence and uh, uh, sexual violence also throughout this series. Yeah, I think talking about kind of the contempt and hatred element is 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 definitely correct. It's I think it probably intensifies it in a, yeah. in a way. Yeah. Yeah, I guess all I meant in my comment, AJ, is that when we've talked before about um, like trying to understand what this violence may mean on a cultural level and when these plot lines are supposed to reflect those types of questions around... Um, you know, I end up asking questions around sex and gender and what that means to the Bargas, to the Tablor, or when we talked about the Patriotists and Genath. You know, I think when it's supposed to reflect those and uh, larger societal things, it asks me a lot of questions. And then I feel like I really struggle to make meaning mm. um, with the text. Um, and I've tried to articulate that before on the show. And, uh, you know, I end up feeling like I connect more to this, the text um in you know in other ways um that are maybe not about the society or about the sexual violence itself Mm -hmm. um 
And that always leaves me somewhat confused, um, I would mm. say. Mm. So I think that's that's what I mean. Um, but I think the societal element of this one, I think actually, um, you know, obviously it makes it way more disturbing, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, apologies for misunderstanding your point. But no, you're good. I, I yeah. was struggling to articulate it. I, and I don't know if I really have. But um, yeah. Um, I mean, I think you can kind of, I don't know whether it's a satisfying answer or not. Like, I think you can kind of find the answer to this specifically, like this scene specifically, um, in Erickson's response on the, the tour we read, he talks about this covenant between the reader and the author and et cetera, et cetera. Um, and he says, so back to the covenant recoil in horror with this scene. I did, but keep your eyes on the page, read it through, but not for me. Don't for an instant, read it through for my sake. Torture is going on right now. People are being maimed. Some will die. And then he goes on to talk about that torture is, is going on. And uh, you can cry out with indignation, get angry, saying, I didn't agree to this. Why did you do this to me? And and then goes on to talk about it being the nadir of human condition. So I feel like just in some ways, I, it, how I read that stuff from Erickson is it's just in there to like show the worst that humanity has to offer in some ways, just so you can... Uh, I don't know, move on from it with uh, he has another line in here about compassion, but the, you just like the themes going out throughout this book is, is compassion. Uh, the language of redemption is compassion. Compassion is about understanding and understanding is about seeing clear eyed all the things we would perhaps rather not see. Um, so I think he's just sees this as a way to aid the themes of the, the series by showing us the worst of, of the human condition. Yeah, I definitely think it's tied into that element of reflecting on human capacity for violence Mm -hmm. um i guess more what i mean and that's why i was like i don't feel like my feelings are really related to this one in particular is i just uh when it comes to yeah like abstracting um this in a sense to this um what is the usefulness of that in fiction um you know, I don't know. I'm really reflecting on that, you know, mm-hmm. so that's what I would say. Yeah. Um, abstracting it out of the specifics of our world and into a, into a, you know, into a world in which we only know so much about and we're, you know, it's a completely different ballpark in a ball game in a way. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah. I don't know. It's, uh, to be honest, I, I, I don't know. I don't know if I want to speak for the show i don't know how much we're going to be returning to these types of conversations over the next things uh, or over the remainder of the show sure um so i don't know if there's anything else anyone wants to say about this scene or kind of how erickson has approached many of this throughout the series no i think i'm i'm satisfied with where we've yeah i'm good left it india um yeah no i feel like good on this yeah well listen um uh thank you uh for uh having this conversation and thank you for listening and uh i guess you know i've reiterated before i hope people i hope i hope this was wasn't a disaster you know and i hope (laughs) that the the conversations can be had in good spirit and people can hear each other's thoughts and that can be healthy, you know? Yeah. Uh, let us know your thoughts on our Twitter or our email, or you join the discord and I'm sure there will be a lively conversation there. There always is. Yeah. Uh, so. All right, everybody. Um, have a safe and help healthy new year. Thanks for listening. Bye. <laughs>